Good morning and welcome to worship at the United Church of Fayetteville on this crisp fall morning. The leaves are changing, the days are getting cooler and shorter, and it is obvious that winter is on the way. But let's not rush winter just yet. Let's stand in the moment. Let's experience fall and all that God has in it for us, right here and right now. We so often overlook what is all around us as we rush to get to whatever is coming next. We need to slow down. We need to enjoy everything that God has given us and continues to give us. We will have time tomorrow for tomorrow. Let us make time today for today. People of God, each week we gather to celebrate the gifts of God who has given us into this community of praise and worship. With music, prayer, and gladness, we live in praise of the beauty of life we have been given as together we worship the Lord. Amazing God, the gifts you bestow on us are too numerous to name. Yet our gratitude demands we try. We are grateful for our time of worship and focus on you that restores our awareness of all that we have and from whom it comes. We are glad for your spirit which empowers our joy and our generous spirits in your image. Accept our thanksgiving for the blessings, gifts, and call of this life of discipleship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us listen to the word of the Lord as it comes to us in the psalmist's expression of trust. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. God's word to us continues from the letter of First Peter. Let us listen together. Peter writes, Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To God be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. God always blesses the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of the Holy Word. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, gift us with your spirit that we might find thoughts and ways and opportunities in this time, in words that come to us across time. In Christ's name we pray, amen. About the time that I moved to Chicago to attend seminary, there was a story circulating among the populations of the various universities and seminaries in the area. Apparently, one day, a well-appointed, silver-haired woman arrived in a limousine at the steps of Regenstein Library, part of the University of Chicago library system. She wanted to visit, but apparently there were things even more valuable there than the collected knowledge of the Western world. It wasn't all that easy to get into the library. One needed an appropriate student, faculty, or staff ID, or some other authorized documentation. The woman could produce none of those as the security guard ran through the list. Still, she wanted to visit. He asked to see her driver's license instead. She looked pointedly at the limousine. Frustrated, but still wanting to help, the guard asked, don't you have anything with your name on it? She responded, hopefully with amusement and not exasperation, the building. It is reported she had a lovely visit. I have no doubt that in the annals of her family's financial records of a naming endowment, there is a statement from UC similar to the one that appears on UCF's giving statements. The United Church of Fayetteville does not provide goods or services as whole or partial consideration for any contributions made. While I know those statements are required by law and they are in order to preclude expenses being written off as charitable donations, they have always annoyed me, particularly with regard to donations, pledges, offerings, and tithes given to religious organizations. They are legal, required, and totally untheological. Let me say, as we proceed, that I had one of those, I hate when that happens, experiences this week, referring to events that are useful, insightful, but often redirecting and work-producing. 
in this case requiring the complete rewriting of my already drafted sermon for this morning. What happened? The Wednesday Women's Bible Study. We are studying the Psalms. For me, one of the greatest gifts of the psalmists for people of faith is not just their powerful and gifted writing, but their utter humanity. They refuse to pull punches, they do not airbrush their own failings, and they are open about what they wish God would do to their enemies. They do not feel the need to protect God from their thoughts or feelings. This past week, we focused on Psalms of Thanksgiving. Not locked in any particular order, those psalms include a record of what the psalmist asked for and how God responded, an offer of thanksgiving, and a promise, a calling of the community to join in the psalmist's praise, and promise of sacrifice, duty, or service. And those elements are held in a human tension which the psalmists artfully express. Most of the discussion in class focused on that tension. Class members pointed out that while the psalmists gave thanks, they weren't above pointing out how God benefited from responding to the psalmist's petition. God would have a psalmist as a continuing worshiper and servant. The psalmist even dared to suggest that without the psalmist, well, God's life would be less rich with praise. The tensions were felt more keenly as the class began to discuss the promises and sacrifices offered by the psalmist. They identified a transactional quality to the exchange, expressed in a conditional promise. If you, God, do this, I will do this, or in a retrospective promise, because you, God, have already done this, I will do this. What followed was a discussion about balancing the scales of thanksgiving and the suggestion that perhaps the psalmist balanced them a little too well, a sort of bartering with God arrangement that was uncomfortable. As I mentioned earlier, I do believe one of the great gifts of the psalms, psalmists is their utter humanity. Neither the psalmists nor any of the rest of us are condemned for our humanity by the one who made us human. Therefore, we need to be careful not to judge ourselves or others too harshly for our common humanity, which is a very different thing than denying that humanity. While we may not use words of liturgy and psalms or other formal language, we often blur the line between who actually needs thanks, the giver or the recipient. It's a very human perspective. Sometimes we need to be reminded that in our relationship with God, God needs nothing from us, but God does provide us with opportunities to make our spirits whole, including the opportunity to express gratitude. Like the psalmists, I suspect that at one time or another, all of us have reflected on potential gifts of service or treasure by including some important conditions. If I can retire, if I don't have to do this, if I get a raise, if I keep my job, etc., etc. Nor do I have a recollection of working with anyone in crisis in an ER or an OR waiting room in the middle of the night when a teenage child hasn't come home or when a child goes off to war, waiting for a biopsy to come back or announcements about layoffs. In those circumstances, I cannot recall anyone who hasn't offered a gift if their prayer is answered, if she lives, if my son comes home safely, if I'm not disabled, if I keep my job. Those are all the responses of someone who is human, not someone who is unfaithful. They are the responses of some of people who remain in relationship with God, even in difficult days, who rely on God to sort out the intention from our limited means of expression, and who understand that God is present and working even in those challenging moments. 
far less important than the specificity of the requests, the eloquence of the praise, or the size of the sacrifice is the rhythm of asking, receiving, praising, promising, sharing, and starting all over again day by day. That rhythm can be inspired and sustained by any number of practices. It is certainly why we worship weekly. We may engage in the mindful practice of listing the good things that happen to us each day or in any other number of prayerful, praiseful activities. We might even look at untheological legal statements we see on every statement of charitable giving from the church or any other organization. This organization does not provide goods or services as whole or partial consideration for any contributions made. The first thing people of faith need to remember when reading such a statement is that any contributions made have come to us from the hand of God. Our capacity to give anything is a result of our health, opportunity, education, the nurture and sacrifice of others, life itself, or sheer good fortune. It is not of our doing. Our giving is not to obtain those good things for ourselves, but to give in response to having already received them. And while naming endowments can have their value, when it comes to giving in the church, it's helpful to remember that our giving has already been named to the glory of God in the name of Christ Jesus. Such statements, such practices of praying, asking, receiving, thanking, and promising remind us ever and always that the scales of thanksgiving are radically unbalanced. For God has poured out into one side of the scale the extraordinary riches of life and faith. It is a golden dish weighed nearly to the ground with the treasures of this life. We can never hope to raise our side so that the scales are level, giving thanks and offering. God does not expect that we will. We are not measured according to whether or not we can balance the scales of thanksgiving, which we cannot do. We are not measured by our capacity to be eloquent poets. We are moved toward wholeness in the abundant life for which Christ came by a commitment to making our whole lives psalms of praise. So let us practice together and alone, not for God's sake, but for our sakes and the sake of the whole world. Amen. gathered in prayer. Loving Lord, we are gathered together secure in the faith that as we have pledged to hold your people in our hearts, so you hold us in yours. 
Let us draw closer to you in stillness, listening, feeling the beat of our own hearts, that you would make one with yours. As our life's blood moves through us, may we give thanks for all the many things that make our hearts beat with joy. May it wash through our minds and souls cleansing us of guilt and shame, and stilling the thundering of our fears. As we tune into the rhythms of our bodies, may we work with you toward restoring the healing rhythms that will move us toward the healing of broken bodies and spirits. Gift us with your spirit, Lord, that our hearts may indeed beat with yours reaching out in compassion to those in need in this place and around the world. Receive our prayer, Lord. And by your grace, may we work for the things for which we pray. We pray in Jesus' name, using the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen and now may the love of god the grace of our lord jesus christ and the communion of the holy spirit be with us all now and forevermore amen
Thank you.